Hey, what up guys, welcome back. Uh, this is not gonna be your typical nine hole course vlog. I'm going to be playing nine holes at The Hay, which is a Tiger Woods designed nine hole course in Pebble Beach. Uh, so what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna hit my tee shot and while I'm walking to my next shot, explain the significance of that hole's yardage, which correlates with the year in Pebble Beach history, and then uh, do some B-roll shots in between, and then I'll hit my chip or my putt or whatever and score that way. So if you're looking for a straight up play, this is not your video, uh, but if you wanna know what The Hay is all about and what each hole signifies, I mean, it's just information straight from the website, but but this is what the format of this video is going to be. So let's hit the course and watch some play. And then afterwards, we'll talk about if it's worth it, which I do think it is worth it. And then we'll get into the details as such. What's up, guys? We are here at The Hay in Monterey, Pebble Beach. Um, pretty much, it's like a chip and putt course with two holes uh, that are over 100 yards. Uh, one hole emulates number seven at Pebble Beach, so that'll be pretty fun. All right, so we're gonna go ahead at the course. And let's let's do this. Oh no! Come back. Oh, I'm so screwed. It looked good. All right, I'm going to read off the descriptions of each hole. This is from a future hole, but this is hole one called Hay. 1957, Peter Hay, the longtime head professional at Pebble Beach Golf Links, built on the site of Monterey Peninsula's first and still only short course. A vision to create a course that can be played quickly and enjoyed by golfers of all ages uh, and abilities remains our guided principles. The first hole position to frame stunning views of Carmel Bay and elicit anticipation for the fun ahead is dedicated in his honor. All right, straight from the website, hold to 106 yards. It's called seven, for appropriately. 106 yards, the seventh hole of the Pebble Beach Golf Links is among the shortest in the championship golf, yet it's setting atop the jagged cliffs of Arrowhead Point, making one of the most confounding and picturesque par threes in the world. Absent the cliffs, the hole before you is an exact replica and our tribute to the brilliance Jack Neville and Douglas Grant exhibited and identifying and building the gem in 1919. Good. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, go, 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 go. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Straight up roll off the... You reckon they roll down Yeah, the like it didn't roll into the gully. This hole number three is called Watson. In 1982, Pebble Beach hosted its second U.S. Open Championship. Hall of Famer Tom Watson executed a mir miraculous chip, chip in from deep rough off the 17th green. Another birdie on the last hole sealed Watson's first U.S. Open Championship. In 2019, Gary Woodland would replicate Watson's success on number 17. This time it was a long chip from the putting service to set up an easy par en route to his first major victory. Nice shot. All right, hole four is called Bing. In 1947, Bing Crosby brought the original Pro-Am tournament to Pebble Beach, which pairs celebrities, entertainers, athletes, and business leaders with the greatest pros from around the world. Eventually known as the Crosby's Clam Big, the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am is one of the longest running events on the PGA Tour. <laughs> oh, 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 that's still not good. Ooh, nice. Sit there. Sit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hole five is called Grace. In 1948, Pebble Beach hosted its second U.S. Women's Amateur Championship, won by 21-year-old sensation Grace Lezenik. The Pebble Beach Championship for Women's was played from 1923 to 1951. Hall of Famer Marion Hollins won an incredible seven times and finished runner-up additional six times. In 2003, Pebble Beach will welcome back the world's best female golfers for its first U.S. Women's Open. Stop, 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 just stop. Oh, go. Turn over. No, it needs to go. It's short. 
Oh, that's junk. All right, this next hole is hole number six, it's called Lanny. In 1977, Pebble Beach hosted its lone PGA Championship. Hall of Famer Lanny Watkins completed a six-stroke final round comeback by defeating Gene Litter in the first major championship, decided in a sudden death playoff. Oh, it's coming down. Oh! Oh, got a marker. What? It goes that way? Good shot. There it is. Come back. Come back. Oh! Dang it! You didn't kick him to the trap, did you? Yeah, I did. All right, hole number seven is called Jack. In 1961, Jack Nicholas's love for Pebble Beach was born. When he recorded runway victories in the semifinals and finals to capture his second US Am Championship, where the USGA next returned to Pebble Beach in 1971, the Hall of Famer claimed the first US Open plate on the public course, becoming the only golfer to win both national championships at the same venue. Oh, great out. Nice out. Oh, let's go. Oh, nice <laughs> Sit there. Sit hard. Sit. Oh. <laughs> Next hole is called Kite, 92 yards. 1992, Pebble Beach hosted its third U.S. Open. Hall of Famer Tom Kite held steady in Sunday's Gale Force wins to win his first major championship. Closing with an impressive even par, Grant McDowell's victory in 2010 U.S. Open resembled kites as the Northern Irishman overcame a three-shot final round deficit despite closing a 74 to claim his first major championship. All right, final hole, it's called Tiger. In 2000, Pebble Beach hosted the 100th US Open Championship. Hall of Famer Tiger Woods crushed a field by a record of 15 strokes and one of the most dominant performance in golf history. The win was the first of four straight majors for Woods known as the Tiger Slam and regarded as one of the greatest streaks in the golf history. Completing the circle, Woods partnered with Pebble Beach Company in its 100th year to reimagine the incredible setting we enjoy today. So this is the hay. Each hole has its historic significance and that is detailed by the yardage on the card. Um, each hole has, you know, some significant meaning in the history of our game and the sport that we love. Um, would I recommend it? If you can get the chance to get out here, it is a little expensive for what it is, but it's cool to experience and hit some of these shots. Um, yeah, so other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this little vlog. I'm gonna finish this up. Uh, yeah, we'll keep going. All right, as you can see, shot five over, not the best, but hey, I had a really good time. Obviously, the course was in immaculate condition. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you're allowed to hit off the grass every day there, only special certain days. Um, they had mats there, but today we played on a Friday, so uh, we got to hit off grass, which is great. Um, is it worth it? $65. So yeah, I think it's worth it as a one-time thing, or if you're bringing people into the area and they haven't played it, you play with them. Um, if I were to make a suggestion, I wouldn't make the hay your only golfing to do. It's a good supplemental golfing. So what happened is that after we played the hay, you know, waited a few hours and we had a tee time scheduled for Pacific Grove Golf Links. So, um, yeah, I would try to, you know, maybe put the hay as a supplemental, you know, maybe if you want to do like a fun little challenge with your friends or something and, and show them, show them out to see whose short game is better. That's a perfect course to do that. Um, but without knowing the history, if you don't really try to buy in into, you know, the atmosphere and the purpose of the course, it's really just a chip and putt that's in really good condition. And then you get to play hole number seven at Pebble Beach. Um, so that being said, that's kind of how I see it. You do get 
get like free like short tees and a you know divot fixer uh, when you're there. There's a lot of cool merch. I love the logo. It looks great. Um, but other than that, that's that's pretty much the experience. So I hope you like this style uh, of of you know, course vlog is a little different than my other ones, but I really just wanted to show you what it's like to play there and then kind of give the significance behind each hole because that's kind of what it's all about. Other than that, like, as you see, as you see, it's a really good condition course, nine holes, but without the history of it, it is what it is. I mean, it is fun, but that's, that's what you're getting for 65 bucks. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed that. More to come and I'll see you in the next one.